Hey Aries, welcome to your love and romance reading for March 2023. We're going to see what's coming up here for the Aries Collective in love and romance. Happy birthday to the March Aries out there. I know part of March is Pisces, but part of March is Aries. So happy birthday to the March Aries. We're going to see what's coming up here for Aries Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. For the lovely Aries Collective. Keep in mind, this is a general reading for the Collective. Not every single message is going to resonate, and that's okay. Take what does, leave what doesn't. You might need a private reading. We're going to move you all just a little bit closer, and we're going to get right on into it. The first card that's coming up here for the Aries Collective is the Emperor. I love it. You know why I love it? Um, <laughs> um, for those of you who've heard me say this, some, well, ha some of you haven't heard me say this, but when I'm reading for somebody... And their major arcana card um, comes up in a reading. It tells me that this is a situation that involves you taking back your power and coming into your authenticity and living your best life unapologetically. Okay. Uh, so also in a love reading, when the major arcana card comes up of the zodiac sign I'm reading for, or one of the zodiac signs that are involved, it tells me that that is the person that's going to have pull in this situation. So Aries, whatever is happening in March, you have a lot of power over your love life. You have a lot of power in, an, in a relationship, those of you who are already coupled, uh, where you have a lot of pull. You have a lot of pull. You have a lot of say. Now, aside from that, the emperor can very much be divine masculine energy. So some of you may be stepping into your divine masculine energy. Some of you may be calling in a divine masculine into your life. Uh, and so there could be a, a sense of uh, like stability, security. The emperor is very stable energy, very secure energy, very mature energy. Now, Aries, if you are in this power mode, I just want to say one thing one little heads up, when we're in this emperor energy, sometimes we can come off a little bit aloof. So uh, that is something you might want to take into consideration uh, when you're dealing with whoever you're dealing with. Like maybe make sure that you are still um, conveying some warmth or interest. Otherwise, Somebody can think you're absolutely done with them or not interested at all. Uh, and that might not be the case. That might not be the case. It, but it may, it may be more like you're having them come to you. Like you're going to come to me, right? But we don't want to be so um, in that energy where somebody can get like a, a, a wrong message that they think we're just not interested at all. So that's just a little heads up for some of you. Okay, for some of you. Uh, just make sure you're you're keeping a, a gauge here on this uh the, the this emperor energy that some of you may be in. The next card that's coming up here for the Aries Collective is the Eight of Pentacles. An Eight of Pentacles can come up in a couple of different ways. Those of you who are single, you may be meeting someone through some kind of a training or some kind of a class or a workshop. Some of you are have been thinking of taking some kind of training or some kind of workshop and your guides are guiding you to do this because it's aligning you with meeting this person, okay? So there could be a sense here in learning someone through some kind of self-improvement or, or, or further education or uh, even learning a hobby, so it's like just going somewhere to learn a hobby or an interest. Uh, other way Eight of Pentacles can come up is working out the details in a situation. So working out the details in a situation, uh, like, uh, fine, like, like fine tuning the plans or going over the details, which makes sense coming up here with the emperor, because the emperor is very organized. The emperor is organized, the emperor is disciplined. So some of you may be working out like fine, uh, fi like, like finite little details with somebody right? You're not about the, the vagueness. You're not about the, oh, well, we'll just see. It's like, hold on now. Let's talk about this. Let's define this. Let's, let's make sure that we're on the same page here. So with this eight of pentacles, some of you Aries are going to be in this energy where you're really 
uh, getting down to the details of how things are going to be, how things are going to work, what the expectations are, what the duties are, what the relationship is. Like you're not just looking at this as like a love relationship, but you're looking at this as like a unit, a functional unit, like working together, doing life together. What is this going to look like? What's required of you? What's required of me? How are we going to do this? How are we going to make this work? So Aries, you're not playing around. You're not, you're not, you're not just, you know, dilly dallying here. You're not looking to waste time. And so I feel like, um, this is, this is a, a serious commitment or a, a serious relationship, a relationship where it's dating with intention. It's and, and the intention here is making a life making a life, laying down a foundation, building upon that foundation. Aries isn't playing games in March. I can say that much. The next card that's coming up here for you all is the Two of Swords. Now, there could be some kind of an impasse here with this Two of Swords. Um, this is the thing. Because you have the pull in the situation, because you have the power in the situation, um, this could very well be somebody who, who like, does not want to walk away from you or does not want to miss their chance with you. But the Two of Swords can come up when there's an impasse. We don't exactly agree, but neither one wants to walk away. Neither one wants to give up. So something just kind of gets swept under the rug or, okay, well, we're just not going to talk about this anymore. But it doesn't get resolved. And here's a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of a, hey, Aries, look out. Because you might think, okay, this person is still with me. I said what I said. I know they heard me. I know they heard what I said. They're still with me. So you're going to maybe think that they have agreed. Like they've silently agreed. But really, all they did was just kind of drop it. They're like, I don't want to piss Aries off. I don't want to risk Aries like being done with me or telling me to get out of here. So we're just not going to talk about it. And I, I don't know, I'm just going to hope that it goes away or I'm going to hope that Aries might change their mind later. And you might move forward with this person thinking that they've agreed. But really, they're just trying to find a way not to talk about this anymore. And when we have that Two of Swords energy, that pressure can build and build and build and build and escalate and become some kind of a, like a big conflict later. At least that's what I've seen uh, with the Two of Swords reading for people over the years. So Aries, <laughs> some of you are dealing with a person who on a particular issue may not agree with what you're saying, may not agree with what you want, but at the same time, they don't want to, they don't want to give up. They don't want to walk away. And they might hope that this hard boundary or this hard uh, 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 deal breaker is not a hard deal breaker. I want to pull clarifiers here around the Two of Swords. Please show us clarifier one. Please show us clarifier two. Please show us clarifier three. Four of Swords. Tower, see that escalation, that escalation, that big issue, and the page of pentacles. So this could be around money, money or children, money or children, or the time frame of children. And it, you might be very upset when you find out later that they're still on the fence, or they're still trying to figure out what they want to do, or they're they're yet they're not convinced yet. Um. So it could be an issue here around finances or around children or the time frame of having children. Uh, I do feel for some of you, there's going to be also issues where you all might not be agreeing on the way a child is being raised or disciplined. And this can be a touchy subject. If we're coming into a situation where like we have a step parent situation, that could be a very touchy situation. If somebody is coming in and telling us what to do with our own kids, or if we're telling somebody what to do with their kids, that can be a very, very touchy situation. Um, <clears throat> how you're going to resolve this? Oh, gosh, I, I think it's a case by case situation, right? We're not going to have 
the same solution for every single person. But there's going to be issues here either around finances, how you're, what you're doing with the money, or something around kids, something having to do with children, having children, or the way that the children are being raised. Uh, this is a big issue, right? This isn't something that we can just kind of ignore. Uh, but just a heads up that your person might just kind of get quiet about it and move on. That does not mean that they've they've agreed, just so that you're not shocked later on. Just know here that there's going to need to be a, a way to resolve this, a way to talk about this, a way to figure this out. Because uh, you might think that everything is hunky-dory and you're moving past it. And then later on, you're like, what? <laughs> like, what in the heck? Like, this is not what we had talked about. This is not what we had agreed about. And they're going to be like, I never agreed to anything. I just dropped it, you know? So there could be a miscommunication here you need to look out for. The next card that's coming up here for the Aries Collective is the Nine of Wands. So I feel like you're standing your ground. And you're protecting what you've built. You're protecting what you've created in your life. Um, Aries, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you in a situation did not ask your person to sign some kind of a prenup or even a postnuptial if you're already married. There may be some things here that are shifting around your finances, around work, around your business that you're wanting to protect, uh, especially since there seems to be some kind of uh, disagreement here about the money, about the money or what we're doing with the money or how we're investing the money. And so some of you might feel like I've worked really, really hard and I need to protect this. I need to keep this safe. I can't just go, you know, risking this. So I feel Aries, you may be the one to bring this up, that you're trying to protect what you've worked for, you're trying to protect your assets. Um, if you are in a situation where uh, you're, you know, you're with a partner uh, that has, that's very established, um, you know, if they're coming at you with this uh, issue, then you might say, okay, fine, but hey, look, I have my stuff too. And I'm just as concerned about my stuff as you are about your stuff. So we're going to have to put my stuff in this agreement too, because I'm going to protect what's mine, right? If you're coming at me with that energy, I'm coming at you with the same energy. I need to make sure that what I'm bringing in is protected and that it is on record that this belongs to me and you don't get to tell me what to do with it. So there, there there's, there's a sense here in terms of like the independence in the relationship, um, I, I feel like, obviously, if you're in the emperor energy, you're not going to be wasting your time with a, a page or or e even a king or a queen, right? Um, you're going to be with empress energy, emperor energy, empress energy. And this kind of relationship, they're two very independent people. And so some of you might be saying, you know what, we're going to have to make this work, you know, in, in a way where there's independence. If we can't agree on what we're doing with what, then we have our own separate stuff. And this is what we're each required to contribute uh, to the household, uh, to how things are going to work, to how things are going to run. But outside of that, you can't tell me what to do with my stuff. And I won't tell you what to do with your stuff. So I, I feel that this is actually the solution, is that there's going to be separateness, like individuality, independence, but then also working out on what the obligations and responsibility and requirements are for the relationship and for the household. And you two will meet that. And then outside of that, your money is your thing, your kids is your thing um, kind of situation here. Um, the next card coming up here for the Aries Collective is the Ace of Wands. So Ace of Wands is going for something, seizing an opportunity. Coming in with the Nine of Wands, um, it gives us two different kinds of storylines here, or two different uh, scenarios. So those of you that we talked about this whole uh, independent thing, this whole kind of emperor and empress thing, with this Nine of Wands, you may be feeling secure. Okay, we came to an agreement. 
I feel secure and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this. I'm going to go for this relationship. You may also feel more secure in investing your time and energy into opportunities that are coming up for you because now there's an understanding, right? There's an understanding that you're going to do this in your way. You're going to do this uh, in, in like uh, your own personal uh, efforts, your own personal endeavors. And you're like, okay, I can go for this now because I can be in this relationship, but I'm not giving up my ambitions and I'm not giving up my independence. The other way that the nine of wands and the ace of wands can come together. And this is more so those of you who may be single and are coming into a newer relationship. Nine of wands can come up when we're a little bit on the defensiveness and we feel a little bit uh, scared about taking a chance, right? Especially if you've come out of a, a heartache recently or if it's been a really long time since you've put yourself out there and you're finally deciding that you're going to, you know, date again, you're going to let somebody in. This nine of wands can come up where we're really worried about, you know, making the wrong decision or letting in the wrong person. Should I give this person a chance? Should I not give this person a chance? Some of you feel like this is a really divine masculine energy. Do I let them in? What if I'm wrong about it? Well, this is the thing. With the nine of wands, every single one of these wands belonged to somebody who came up to this poor guy and tried to take him out. And he protected himself and he stood up for himself and he was able to win that battle and take away their wand, their stick, and stick it in the ground behind him. And so every single one of those wands is a battle that he fought and won. And every single one of those battles gave him experience, made him stronger, made him wiser, and made him a better fighter. Now, we can see here he's got this bandage around his head. He's not without injury. He, he, took, uh, he took some hits here. He got hurt. But he's still standing. He's still alert. He's still strong. And he's able to take on whatever might come. And he's even stronger and wiser than all the times before. You know, one might say we don't want to mess with this person. But the message with the Nine of Wands is this. There is absolutely, positively, nothing new under the sun anybody can come at you with. You've seen every lie. You've seen every manipulation. You've seen every dirty little trick in the book. You've seen it all. There's nothing new anybody can come at you with. So as long as you're paying attention and staying alert and allowing your experience to guide you, you're going to be able to spot anything that's not right. And you're going to spot it early on. You're going to spot it very quickly. And if it's something that's not good for you, you're going to be able to nip it in the bud right away. And if it's something that is good, you're going to be able to trust it and let it in. This isn't your first rodeo. You're not, you're not some, you know, naive little person. And so you can trust yourself to make the right decisions as long as you're staying alert and you're paying attention and looking at the signs. Are the signs adding up to be something good or are the signs adding up to where the math isn't working? Something's not making sense. You're going to know that. And so the Ace of Wands is saying you're going to be able to seize the right opportunity. You're going to be able to seize the right relationship. And you're going to be able to, to make this happen and to, to make this work and to let in the right person, right? Also with the Ace of Wands, there's a sense of passion. Like in a love reading, a sense of passion. So even those of you where there was like this little bit of a, a, a an impasse and then you're coming to the decision of having your independence, but then the aspects that are combined and the aspects are separate, even that tension might be adding to the passion here for some of you. Some of you might have a, a very passionate connection here that's coming in. Some of you are letting in the right person and allowing yourself to experience passion. And for whatever reason, I feel for some of you, Aries, it's been a long time. At least maybe it's been a long time since you've had a relationship that you were excited about or a person whom you felt passion for, right? 
Uh, maybe some of you are coming out of a long marriage where you're finally getting divorced and you're like, Ooh, we didn't have passion for over a decade, right? So maybe for some of you, it's been a long time since you've had passion in a relationship, but I feel that here. I feel passion in the relationship. Some of you may disagree in a very big way with a person, but you may make up in a very big way with a person. Now, some of you might say, oh, Amethyst, that's negative. Oh, Amethyst, that's toxic. I need to clarify something. I'm never going to encourage anybody to stay in a situation where they're being mistreated, uh, where there isn't respect, uh, where there's uh, danger, obviously you want to get out of that kind of situation. I'm not telling anybody to stay in a narcissistic situation, nothing like that. All I can do is read the energy that's coming up. This is the energy that's coming up. If you're a high vibrational person, you can deal with it in a high vibrational way. But wherever the spectrum is, it's not my place to tell somebody which relationships they're going to be in and which relationships they're not going to be in, right? And you are going to experience the energies in different ways. For some of you, it is going to be a relationship where you're going to argue. And when you make up, my gosh, are you going to make up? For other ones of you, it's laying boundaries, having independence, having your own thing, being in your power. And that might be a turn on to you and to the other person. For some of you, there's an element of arguing, okay? And some people are into that. And the people who are into that, guess what? I don't have the right to tell them not to be into that. <laughs> Whatever adults are into and they're consenting and nobody's getting hurt, it's nobody's say to say what people should do or shouldn't do. All right? You might want to check out your other placements. Sometimes your other placements might resonate more than your sun sign or whatever placement this may be for you. There's a link in the description that will take you to those videos. And if you would like to schedule a private reading with me, there's a link in the description that will take you to my scheduling page, calendly.com slash amethystangelite. You can schedule a private reading with me there. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I hope you all have a fabulous month ahead. Take care and be well. And don't forget to check out the weekly forecasts. Take care, my dears.